Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about digestion and absorption of carbohydrates. So we know that we know the classes of the carbohydrates and the type of carbohydrates like polysaccharides, disaccharides and monosaccharides. So what is the actual phenomena of the digestion of the carbohydrates? It is a phenomena in which the polysaccharides will get converted into the monosaccharides. So this is the actual phenomenon of the digestion of the carbohydrates. But there is a mechanism which has been left over in this process. So what is that mechanism? Let us see now. And here the digestion. Let us begin with the digestion and later let us learn about the absorption of carbohydrates. So coming to the digestion of the carbohydrates first. The digestion of the carbohydrates begins from the mouth and ends towards the intestine. So firstly the food which is present in the mouth will enter into the stomach and from the stomach it enters into the intestine and the carbohydrate digestion occurs in these three parts only. So firstly let us learn how the digestion occurs in the mouth. So come into the first one mouth. But here we are learning about only the carbohydrates even there are lipids also which will be explained in the next other video. So come into the digestion of carbohydrates in mouth. So we will take the food which consists of the nutrients and that food when you keep it in mouth then it will get mixed with the saliva. And we know that the saliva consists of alpha amylase enzyme. So here the food which you consumed will get interacted with alpha amylase enzyme, right? So what is this alpha amylase enzyme? It has a capacity of cleaving alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkages. So if you see here properly, these are the sugar units. Actually, these are the sugar units. And you have to know about what is mean by alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkages and alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic linkages. So here, Normally, if you take one of the glucose molecule like this and this will be the first carbon, this is the second, this is the third, fourth, fifth and sixth. We know that the glucose molecule consists of six carbon units. Okay, right. So here the total is six carbons, right. So if the bond which has been formed between first carbon and fourth carbon is called as alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage and the bond which is present between first carbon and sixth carbon is called as alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic linkage. But what I have said you in the theory part is that this alpha amylase enzyme will help in cleaving of 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage only. But here the cleaving of alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic linkage doesn't occur. Only alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage only occur. So if you see here, this is the alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage, right? So the cleaving or as a breaking of this bond occurs in such a way that what are the products usually formed? If you see here, limit dextrin will be formed, maltose, maltotriose and isomaltose. So these are the products which has been formed from the cleaving of the alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage by the activity of saliva. I mean the alpha amylase which is present in the saliva. So these are the products which will be formed. Which one? Alpha limit dextrins, maltose, maltotriose, isomaltose. So in this way the digestion occurs in the mouth. Which digestion? Carbohydrate digestion occurs in the mouth. And now up to here the digestion of the carbohydrates has been completed in the mouth. So now from here the food will enter into the stomach. So now what happens in the stomach let us see. We know that the stomach consists of gastric juices. Right. And that gastric juices also includes HCl, hydrochloric acid and proteases enzyme. Right. So here the stomach consists of hydrochloric acid. Hence the pH of the stomach is said to be as acidic in nature because of the presence of the hydrochloric acid. As it is an acid, the pH of the stomach is said to be as acidic in nature. So now, so now what happens? The food which has been entered into the stomach consists of amylase because it has been already mixed over here itself, right? But when it enters into the stomach, this amylase which has been present here in the on the food, then it becomes into inactive in form. Why it becomes into inactive? Because of the presence of the pH which has been acidic in nature. This acidic nature because it consists of hydrochloric acid, right? So because of this hydrochloric acid nature, this amylase will become into inactive in form. This acidic nature will make this amylase to convert from active form to inactive in form. So finally this amylase become inactive and when this amylase become inactive then what happens in the carbohydrate digestion doesn't occur. When this carbohydrate digestion doesn't occur then what happens is that now pancreas will come under the function. So now what does, what does this pancreas do? It starts secreting pancreatic juices and sodium carbonate. And this both of these two uh, elements will get, com will get combined to the food. Will get combined to the food which consists of the amylase which is inactive in form. So now when this pancreatic juice and sodium carbonate will enter into the uh, food, then what happens is that the food will start migrating towards the small intestine will be migrating towards the small intestine. So this is a process which occurs in the stomach. So the actual process begins in the small intestine. So now what happens? Let us see. So here 
the pancreas will uh, will plays a major role in function in such a way that it secretes pancreatic juices and sodium carbonate and even it also secretes amylase also right and now this amylase and this amylase will both get combined together and makes this amylase to get into active form it converts this inactive into active form so when it becomes active then it starts its functioning in such a way that again the total process which i have said you here it starts cleaving the alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage only but here the products which will be obtained are different like oligosaccharides and disaccharides because uh, here already the polysaccharides will get digested and finally here the oligosaccharides and disaccharides will be formed so this occurs in the small intestine so here oligosaccharides includes glucoamylase and disaccharides includes lactose sucrose maltose and now this disaccharides will get finally converted into the monosaccharides and this monosaccharides includes glucose galactose fructose so in this way the digestion of the carbohydrates occurs in mouth stomach and also in the small intestine so now let us learn about the how the absorption of the carbohydrates occurs Let's learn about the absorption of carbohydrates. So this is one of the most important topic which you have to learn. And see here, here I am going to explain you about the transport of glucose, and then let us learn about the galactose, fructose, and pentose. So here, the transport of the glucose. How the transport of the glucose occurs? Uh, from uh, see, see here, transport is nothing but from which uh, the glucose should get transported from the intestinal lumen to the mucosal cell, and from the mucosal mucosal cell to the blood capillaries so that is called as transport actually so how the transport occurs let us see in this phenomena and the transport of glucose occurs by the sodium dependent glucose transporter so this is the element which mainly helps in transport of the glucose from the intestine to the blood so how this transport occurs let us see here so now let us show you this diagram so if you see this diagram this is called as sodium dependent glucose transporter so what is what does this plays a major role first of all this transporter consists of two carrier proteins two carrier proteins this is called as sglt1 by 2 protein and this is called as glut2 protein sglt stands for sodium glucose transporter and glut stands for only glucose transporter where glu indicates glucose and t indicates the transporter glucose transporter and here s indicates sodium gl indicates the glucose and t is called as transporter so sodium glucose transporter and the glucose transporter so these are the two carrier proteins which plays a major role in the transport of the glucose from the you know intestine to the blood so how does how does this plays major role let us see here so normally this area is just to think imagine yourself that this is the intestinal lumen and imagine yourself this is a mucosal cell okay this area is called as mucosal cell and this area is called as a intestinal lumen so now what happens let us see so here finally it, the polysaccharides has been converted into the monosaccharides so what are the monosaccharides which i have said you glucose and uh, galactose and fructose all of these are called as monosaccharides which i have said you just now so all of these monosaccharides uh, you know all of the, uh, the here i have took the example of the glucose that's it so the the glucose will be present in the intestinal lumen right and the glucose has been synthesized from the polysaccharides which i have said you so now the main aim of this glucose is to enter into the blood so how does it enter let us see now by the help of this protein carrier so how this protein carrier plays a major role firstly this glucose will enter into the protein carrier and then it enters into the mucosal cell so for entering process it requires an energy right so this energy this energy which which mainly helps this glucose to transport into this mucosal cell will be done by this na plus so this na plus ion or as the sodium plus ion will mainly helps this glucose to transport from the intestinal lumen to the mucosal cell it's act, it acts as a energy carrier it mainly helps it mainly gives the energy for the glucose to transport from the intestinal lumen to the mucosal cell and this transportation process will be inhibited by this protein carrier this mainly acts as a barrier in such a way that it will pull glucose towards its side to send it towards the mucosal cell so that uh, so this process requires an energy and that energy will be given by the sodium plus molecule molecule that is called as na plus molecule so in this way the glucose will be finally enter into the uh, you know mucosal cell so along with this sodium molecule also will get enter into the mucosal cell right so now what happens let us see so here the glucose molecule has been entered as well as the sodium molecule has been also entered so here now what happens is that this glucose molecule will enter into the blood capillaries directly with the help of a phenomena called as facilitated diffusion and this process will be inhibited by a protein carrier called as glut2 and that is called as 
glucose transporter where glu indicates the glucose t indicates the transporter and this glucose uh, transporter too mainly helps in carrying this glucose towards the blood capillaries and this process will be inhibited by the process called as facilitated diffusion okay it this glu this glucose will enter into the blood by the facilitated diffusion remember this point facilitated diffusion okay so now here the sodium molecules has been left over so now what happens is that this sodium molecule will use as atp uh, as an energy to uh, to you know to pass out from this mucosal cell it will pass out it will come out from the mucosal cell and the k plus ions which is present in the intestinal lumen will again enter into the you know mucosal cell so this process occurs and here atp hydrolysis occurs because this sodium ions will require some amount of energy to to you know to move back into this intestinal lumen and that energy will be required in the form of atp and that atp will be hydrolyzed so when the atp will get hydrolyzed then here then it forms atp will get hydrolyzed then it forms adp and one of the inorganic phosphate that's nothing but adenosine triphosphate will undergoes hydrolysis and forms adenosine diphosphate that's nothing but one of the phosphate will be removed and that is called as inorganic phosphate and this inorganic phosphate will act as the energy energy molecule and this inorganic phosphate will be utilized by this na plus ion to uh, to perform its function okay in that way the na plus ion will get will get moved out and the potassium ion which is present out will get enter into the mucosal cell okay so here not only the one unit of the glucose transporter is present there is and there are more units of glucose transporters which are present just this is the diagram of the one unit of sodium dependent glucose transporter and here another glucose transporter will be present in the down region of this and again another transporter region will be present here like that there will be many units which will be presented at this down uh, uh, down by down you know be, uh, and this will be uh, the, the gap which is present between each of the sodium dependent glucose transporter is called as lateral intercellular space so this is called as lateral inter intercellular space so between this latter uh, you know between this both this lateral intercellular space will differentiate this both of the transporters so this is one of the transporter unit and here at the down another transporter unit will be present okay so this will get differentiated by the lateral intercellular space there is a space which is present inside it between it and that is called as lateral intercellular space and this will be the just uh, phenomena of the absorption of the carbohydrates in such a way that the glucose molecule which is present in the intestinal lumen will enter into the blood capillaries finally so now what happens so here finally the glucose molecules has entered into the blood capillaries so that's nothing but it entered into the blood that's what we have said here so when it enters into the blood what happens we know that the blood will pass all parts of the body when the blood will start passing all parts of the body then the glucose molecules will also be supplied to all parts of the body in such a way that we will use energy in the form of the glucose we will use energy and then we will uh, do any type of work and we will exhibit the work by utilizing that energy so the work which we exhibited is the only thing which we know but the total mechanism occurs like this so this is the whole thing which you have to know about this transport of the glucose and this will call as the absorption of the carbohydrates so this is just i have said you the transport of the glucose so here the it is named as transporter here it is named as sodium dependent glucose transporter why because here sodium dependent why i have named here sodium dependent because it utilizes sodium molecule for the source of energy in such a way that it mainly helps the glucose to enter into the mucosal cell and hence it is called as sodium dependent sodium dependent it depends upon the sodium hence it is called a sodium dependent glucose transporter because it it mainly helps in the transport of glucose into the blood capillaries hence it is called as sodium dependent glucose transporter so this unit is called as sodium glucose so sodium dependent glucose transporter so this i have said you about the transport of the glucose so not only the glucose is present in the monosaccharide but also the galactose fructose and pentose also so how the galactose will be transported in the same function like this which i have said you the whole uh, galactose also will be formed uh, will get functioned in such a way that it utilizes uh, na plus ions for in the source of energy and get transported into the blood capillaries so galactose performs the same function which i have said you just now and if you see the case of fructose it is energy independent in such a way that the energy is not utilized either the na plus ion as well as the atp is not utilized here it can directly enter into the blood capillaries without involvement of any energy hence it is called as energy independent remember this is very much important first of all this fructose will get converted into the glucose uh, and then it will uh, and then the type of molecule will enter into the blood capillaries by energy independent process it doesn't require either atp or as any ata plus ions also so now 
the pentoses uh, will get entered into the blood by simple diffusion process also okay so this is about the absorption of the carbohydrates and friends if you like my explanation just uh, like my uh, just like my video and also subscribe my channel and if you want notes on this topic you can just join us in the whatsapp group and if you once ask me there or else ping me a message there then i will go in to give your notes and the notes will be in a written form okay so thank you friends just do like subscribe and you can if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box or else you can also ask us in whatsapp group i am going to reply for you immediately thank you